Hello everyone and welcome back. If you're new here, welcome, welcome, and thanks for stopping by. If you enjoy commentary without all the fluff, join our family by subscribing. Oh, Sarah. How could you, you don't guys feel do nothing. this? Do you not feel Sorry, anything? Baby, let's put the baby in you guys, chair. I'm human. This is I my baby. That. My baby is days old. And you're taking my baby away from me. You're taking my baby away from me. You have no heart. This is so wrong! Just give her a second. Can you give her a second? Don't make it seem like I'm crazy, not. okay? Yeah, we support. This is normal. You, this I is know crazy. you have children. Sarah. This is my baby. You may not have babies, but... I carried my baby for nine this months. Is, Santa, so this is normal. You don't care. Yes, I do. Put the baby. You don't care. Which, would you like to put the baby You could have talked. Yeah. No, I don't. I want my baby. Yeah. You have to put the baby my baby is healthy and happy. My baby is breastfeeding for me. Are you gonna? What are you gonna give my baby? Please put the baby in the car. <laughs> David, just call me when you guys are done at the hospital, and I'll let you know about. The blanket. The blanket. <laughs> <laughs> For anyone who is not familiar with this story, this is Saisha Mercado, former American Idol contestant, alongside her children's father, Tyrone Denier, who had to relinquish custody of her week's old baby to the state. So there are two stories floating around, one from the state and the other from the parents. The first is that the couple's 18-month-old son was admitted to the John Hopkins Children's Hospital in St. Petersburg, Florida in March after they brought him to be treated for dehydration. Now, you may be wondering, how is it that an 18-month-old child was dehydrated and the mother explains that she was breastfeeding him and was in the process of transferring fluids from extended breastfeeding to being bottle-fed? Now, according to the hospital, they said that the child was severely malnourished and that the parents refused to cooperate with the baby's needed treatment. So a judge ordered that the baby be placed in protective services. Now the other story that is being told is that the mother refused to have her son receive a B12 shot and was told that the shot was a matter of life and death, which was a lie, according to Saisha. And when she refused, that's when the state decided to wreak havoc with what we've seen here so far. They also held a press conference today, August 17th, and new details have emerged. Those details being the babies have been placed in the care of a distant family member, and this family member is allegedly the person that called CPS to report the neglect of the children in the first place. It is also reported that this family member conspired with Dr. Sally Smith, this pediatrician who, by the way, was the subject of a special investigated by USA Today called torn apart, where the claims were that the doctor was too quick to diagnose ill treatment of little humans. A doctor who also has over a hundred complaints about her practices when it comes to her treatment of people of color and has allegedly over the years worked in concert with the Child Protective Services out of Florida to remove children from their homes with the guise of being a so-called protector of children. This is what the couple had to say prior to them hosting the press conference. Take a listen. First time, and I didn't get to see my babies meet for the first time. I didn't get to see that, and I can't go back and, and redo that moment. I'll never be able to go back and redo that moment. And I'm just missing out on so many precious moments. This is such a precious time. Like I feel my daughter. I feel when she's hungry. I know when she's crying and I, I can't do anything. She's not here with me and I'm supposed to be comforting her. I'm supposed to be loving my babies. I'm supposed to be outside with him and having building experiences and Ra's supposed to be playing his drum with us. And I've been deprived of that and I, I don't know how to articulate it, but it just, 
it hurts so bad. We are law-abiding citizens. We are a contribution to our community. We live a life of service. Anybody that needs help, we see that your problem is our problem. So the fact that we have no criminal background, we have no history with Department of Children and Families, the way that they are, have been attacking us, judging us, and critiquing us, that's outside of their, their job. You know, it's supposed to be, uh, they're supposed to be uh, working hand in hand with families, not destroying families. Every single day we got to wake up. We have to look at our baby setup and look at their, their swings and look at their bedding and they're not here and we have not committed any crime. We have done not done anything that is irresponsible as parents. And we have law enforcement watching us and following us and tracking us and listening to us every single second as if we have a criminal background. So if this can happen to us, it can happen to anybody. This man is right. Additionally, they've enlisted the help of famed civil rights attorney, Benjamin Crump, to aid in regaining custody of their children. And they have also started a GoFundMe page, which I'll put a link to in the description box of this video, if you want to donate. I wanted to add that there are other children in the home, three to be exact, who are his children and they left those children and took hers. So what do you all think about this? Is CPS just doing their job or is there some bias going on? Let me know what you think in the comment section. And if you haven't already, remember to subscribe, like, and share. Also, turn on your notification bell and stay tuned for more. And I will catch you in the next one. Take care.